Congratulations! Now you know how to code. But there's still more. In this section, I will give you a sneak peek into some advanced topics. The switch, multidimensional arrays, libraries and modules, user input, build tools, good programming practices, and some general pointers. Now let's talk about the switch function. This is for if you have lots of conditions. This is an alternative to lots of ifs and else ifs. Like what if you have 10 conditions? You don't just want to keep on repeating out if, else, if, else, if, else, if 10 times because that would be really, really lengthy. But a switch is made just for that. It is simplified. So, let's look at an examples, finding out which season it is. So, in here we have an int that we called season, and right now it's, the, it's set to the second season. So, we want to check what is the second season. So, in the switch function, we input season. And then we have case 1, 2, 3, and 4 for each of the different seasons. So, each of these, each of these cases would be the equivalent of doing if or else if season equal equal to 1. And if that's true, then it's just going to print out whatever is here. So in this case, it is in fact 2, so it will print spring, and then it will go through the break. And what the break does, it just exits out of the whole switch function, and it will continue with the rest of the program. As you know, an array is a sequence of values, but here, one dim array is an array of integers, and two dim array is an array where every element is an array. It is kind of like a table with rows and columns. Similarly, arrays can be three, four, or even n dimensional, meaning they can be they can have as many dimensions as possible. So, as you can see here, in the one dim array, you just have one square bracket. This is how you index it, right? You go one dim array, and then you inside of here, you put whatever index. But here, there's two. So, you would have to have two sets of square brackets to specify which element in which array. So the first one would specify which array, and I'm going to do the zeroth array. And then on the zeroth array, I can do the second element. And this would be 8, because it's the zeroth array, and then of that array, it is the second one, so it's 8. So let's talk about packages and libraries. With classes that we discussed in the object-oriented programming, we can give our code to each other. So, if you group multiple classes together, then it becomes a package. And what people do with these packages is they are available to everybody so that anyone can use their code. Later, we will see an example of this. And a library contains multiple packages, allowing you to do lots and lots of things that another person has programmed for you to use. These are very, very useful for all sorts of things. Instead of you writing a lot of code, you can simplify your code down by using libraries and packages. Now, let's look at an example of a class. 
This is called Scanner. And you don't have to download it because it comes with OpenJDK. OpenJDK includes Java, the Java compiler, and loads and loads of packages. So, let's see what you have to do to use Scanner. Let's go over what Scanner does first. Well, it can basically read what you type. So in this case, I typed a name. It's not mine, but I typed a name, Johnny Johnson. And it could read that name and print it out again. So let's see how it's doing all this. So let's look at the code. We have the import. This is where you are saying to the compiler that I want the code from that scanner class so that I can use it, right? You're importing that class in. This is part of a package like we were talking about earlier and we have to import it just like this. So, then we go into the main and we create our scanner object. Basically, this is just the thingy that will be doing all of the scanning. We're just creating it. And the name is Scanner. So then it prints out full name, and remember it's println, so it'll print a new line. Then it does this, read user input. And what this allows you to do is it allows the user, me, to type something in, in the terminal. And the thing that you see that is green and in italics, that is what I typed. So then, it was able to read that and put it in the full name variable. Then, it was able to print your full name is colon, space, and whatever I typed in. This plus sign over here means that it's joining the two. So, it came out like this. This user input is useful from whenever you need anything from the user. Like a name, some code of some sort, a password, or really anything. So far, we have been using IntelliJ to write code and run the, so the program. What if you want to give or sell the software? The program may have multiple classes and sound files and audio files organized into different packages. A build tool compiles individual Java files, XML files, audio files, whichever ones you need, and then prepares a package or installer to ship to your customers. Some of the popular types are Gradle. This is used in Android Studio to make apps. And Apache Maven. If you want to learn any programming language from here, then you can follow the flow of this course. Meaning everything we've talked about. Variables, operations, conditional statements, loops, functions and more will be in every single programming language to convert your baby steps into a program. But object-oriented programming will only be in a few, and in some you don't have an ability to use a class. And in Python, the programs are not arranged in classes. When you have a program, you do not have to use a class's boilerplate code, but you can use a class if you want to make a blueprint for something. Everything else will be in a bunch of other languages, and there will be some special things. For example, in Python, for list indexing, to do the map, to, to find out the last value in the list, you can just do minus 1. But in Java, you just can't do that. 
you have to find out how long the list is and manipulate that so then you can find out the last number. Also in Python, if you do minus 2, it's the second to last. So for each language, they would have their own tricks to help you code a little bit more easily. Alright, so let's look at some good practices and general pointers while you're coding. First, you have to keep it simple, or KISS for short. You don't want to overcomplicate things. You just want to keep it as simple as possible. Don't try going for some elaborate solution that will do this and that and be all complicated. Do it the simplest way possible. That way, when you're trying to fix something, it will be easier. Next, it's easier to get a working to modify a working system than to get a system working. Meaning that if you have a system that's already ready, it's not very hard to just improve that system, but it is much harder to get that system working. Last, we have dry. Don't repeat yourself. Meaning, if you have something that you're using lots and lots of times, just stick it in a function and it'll be much easier to use. Kiss, and it's easier to modify a working system than to get a system working. And dry, you should keep all these three in the back of your mind while you're coding to make your life a little bit easier.